and you'd never even know that that wire's there because where we came back down in the bed is right behind a trellis that we ended up uh, highlighting and featuring anyway that uh, you guys can't tell from the video, but I can see it's starting to look really, really good, so I'm glad we lit that up. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca, or if you want to see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's gonna look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. Hey guys, so on this project we're remounting a lot of lights up in the trees and kind of down lighting, getting those lights up nice and high, 20, 25 feet up there, shining through the branches so we can kind of create some shadowing down on the ground here. So the um, thing with that is the, the wire for the fixtures we have is only, um, it's only about 10 feet long, so I don't want to have a big waterproof connector hanging halfway down the trees. Uh, one thing you can do if that's something you have is just go buy a junction box at uh, you know the Home Depot store or Lowe's or whatever it is um, and just put that connection in one of those just so you don't have to look at it, at least it hides it. Another option that we often use is these, um, these shrink wrap connectors. Again, you can get them at any home improvement store. Um, what I like about them is they are gel filled here. So once they get, sorry, I got a bee on me here. Um, but they are gel filled, so once they heat up, the gel actually seals around the connection, um, and they're very inconspicuous, so that's why I like using them. So um, we're gonna use them for this. So I've got my, my wire to my fixture, so I wanna make that a lot longer, and then I can make my connections down in the ground and stuff. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, um, I've got my wires, I'm just gonna slide my tube on, because you need to get your tube on the wires first. Uh, so we got that on and one thing I do is I cut, if you can see here, I cut one of them a little bit shorter than the other and I'll show you why I do that. It's, it's basically so I can cheat and just use one of these as opposed to having to use two, um, which same as any of the connections, usually you have to make two for each fixture because you have two wires, but we're going to cheat a little bit and I'll show you how. Um, so basically what I've done is with my wire that's going out into the ground and my fixture wire, I have one longer and one shorter. So I'm going to take the longer one and I'm going to connect it with the shorter one. And I'm actually just gonna twist tie those up. Just twist them together uh, nice and good. And then I'm gonna just bend one of them so it kind of looks like this, right? I don't know if you can see that. So I've got it uh, like this and I've just got it bent and then I'm gonna twist the other two together. Um, and I'll show you in a second why I do that. And then we're gonna twist that. It's so that I can go now and I can bend these like this and the connections aren't going to be touching each other. See how they're separated? So they're not going to be touching each other inside the same um, inside the same shrink wrap connector. They're both in there. They're not touching. Something else you can do just to make sure is sometimes I'll, um, I'll put some electrical tape just around those just to make sure those connections don't touch. Um, and then I'll go and I will shrink wrap that together. So how you do that is very simple. Is you just need a, a torch of some kind and then you just uh, lightly warm that up and you watch it shrink. You're gonna be careful not to get too close and burn anything. Make sure all the wires are still inside. Um, it's pretty hot afterwards, so give it a good little um, I just try and seal it up a bit, but you can see the ooze is kind of coming out a little bit, so it's all waterproofed in there. And once it solidifies, it's pretty hard, and you are not pulling those wires apart. So uh, if you're doing any tree lighting or need to uh, hide some wire and extend it and make a pretty inconspicuous connection, uh, shrink wrap connectors is a really good way to go. When it comes time to burying your wire, just you know, creating a simple trench again. You don't have to go super deep because it's just low voltage wire, uh, but just making your life a little easier by creating a trench. If you can get a tool, something like this, it uh, works really, help, really well to help push that wire down nice and deep into the ground. And then if you need to, just as an extra uh, measure, just some landscape staples is not a bad idea to throw on the wire in a couple different places just to make sure it doesn't come up because if you go and put mulch down on this uh, at a later date and you're raking that in, 
Sometimes you can snag the wire. A simple landscape staple will help keep that wire down so that you're not pulling up those wires. Um, the advantage is if you're using good connectors, you're, you don't have to worry about those pulling apart anyway, but if you want to help keep that wire buried, uh, landscape staples is a really easy way to do that. So the last thing I'm going to explain on this uh, property is a transformer and how to size that properly. Um, I'm obviously I'm not mounting this one right here, but anytime you're going to mount this, you want to just mount it close to um, a GFCI receptacle somewhere that you can plug it in. And all that does is it converts that 110 volt power that comes out of the house down to 12 or 15 volt that is going to go to your system. Uh, and that's what makes it low voltage and that's what makes it safe to handle and I always get asked well how deep do I need to bury the wires do they need to be uh, to code do they need to be 12 inches 24 inches um, and because it's low voltage really they only got to be deep enough that you're not going to be digging them up um, if a dog bit into him and chewed on your wire he's barely even going to feel anything so um, there is really no regulations any in our area anyway as to how deep you have to bury those because that wire does get converted into very safe 12 volt uh, as it is in the ground so how we select our transformer is based on on wattage so for example this is a 150 watt transformer uh, from fx luminaire and the way we've determined this one is pretty simple we have approximately 30 lights on this property and each of those lights averages just over four watts so 30 times 4 is 120 so we're only using 120 watts or only require 120 watts for this project um, but you always want to size your transformer approximately 20 percent higher uh, just to uh, just to cure any inefficiencies or anything like that and give a little bit of extra room also if you ever want to add on down the road so 150 watt transformer will easily handle our uh, our load of lights and the other reason i like this one too is this actually has a 15 volt tap here so if you watch a lot of old videos on youtube about landscape lighting they talk a lot about voltage drop uh, that's because most of those landscapers uh, and and those designers are using halogen fixtures if you're getting a quote for a system and somebody is still quoting you on a halogen fixture i would run for the hills because they're really just trying to sell you a cheaper system it doesn't make any sense nowadays uh, with led and the reason that we can run 30 lights on one transformer is because LED uses so much less power. You might save money on the fixtures by going the halogen route, but then you're going to have to get a massive transformer to run that. And you've got to be really careful on how you run the wire and voltage drop and all those types of things. What I'm telling you is that if you choose a transformer like this that has a 15 volt tap, you can run 20 to 30 lights off of this transformer upwards of 300 plus feet of wire out without ever having to worry about enough voltage drop because a good quality fixture is going to run even if it only gets nine volts on it a crappy quality fixture is not going to but if you get a good one they're all designed to run between nine and ten volts which means you can lose a lot of power along the way and that light is still going to run properly so another reason why you don't want to skimp on a fixture because it is going to cause you more problems down the road uh, and then to run this there's a couple ways you can do that the way i like is just by adding something called an astronomic timer that basically uses uh, uh, sunrise and sunset to program everything and turn your lights on and off or the other option is to make this go wi-fi by using our weon wi-fi transformer uh, which you can easily uh, make this a wi-fi transformer now that you can operate from anywhere in the world so that's how you size a transformer see here we got this bed area um, and this was an area that was totally isolated uh, that we couldn't get wire to really we got this nice beautiful brick walkway here but uh, we're out on Vancouver Island where it is an island and most of its rock and we there's just no way we could tunnel underneath that sidewalk without going super deep and totally messing up the garden so what we did is if you uh, see behind me here um, on this bush that goes up and then across the doorway here and then back down uh, what we did is we actually used the gutter and we actually ran wire up the gutter over the doorway and down into this bed here uh, and we were easily able to do that and now we didn't have to tear up the whole garden but we can get power here and still keep all our lights on the same transform transformer so sometimes you got to be a little creative with how you get wire to different areas um, but there's always a way and you'd never even know that that wire is there because where we came back down in the bed is right behind a trellis that we ended up uh, highlighting and featuring anyway that uh, you guys can't tell from the video but I can see it's starting to look really really good so I'm glad we lit that up and that wire is totally hidden 
so you'd have no idea how we got that wire there. So sometimes you gotta be a little creative. You don't always have to go into the sidewalk. So think of alternative ways. Hey guys, so we've pretty much wrapped up our project. I hope you guys have enjoyed that and found these videos helpful. Um, and again, landscape lighting is not that tough. I think anybody can do it. There's just a couple simple steps. I mean, obviously, get your design, figure out what you want. If you need help with that, that's why we do our free consultations. Just email me some pictures and I can help you find out what's gonna work best on your property. We have our try it before you buy a light where basically you can buy one or two fixtures, go plug them into a battery pack, walk around the property and see what's gonna look good. So that's another tool to help you come up with the design. Once you got the design, you got your lights, then you just go and you set them around the property, go and place them, start placing them, get a rubber mallet, do that, run your wire, leave extra wire as much as possible um, because you never know when you're gonna make mistakes or wanna add on down the road. Go and make your wiring connections. Just be sure you have those two properties that we talked about, waterproofing and that mechanical connection so they don't pull apart. Uh, once you got them wired, go and set up your transformer, hook everything up and go and test those lights. Fire it on, make sure they're all working before you go and bury everything. And my suggestion, especially if you haven't done this before, is come back that first night before you go and bury everything. Make sure you have all the lights where you want them placed. Make sure you're getting the look that you want. And once you do that, then come back the next day, and bury all your wire. There's all kinds of other videos that we have on YouTube for how to bury the landscape lighting wire, how to tunnel under sidewalks, and so much more. If you have any questions about how to install your own landscape lighting, just go to YouTube and search Lighting Doctor, how to whatever, and I guarantee you'll find it. So I hope you guys find that helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to get your free consultation and send me your pictures at cal at lightingdoctor.ca. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys got some great do-it-yourself landscape lighting tips. Now, please be sure to go to our website at lightingdoctor.ca and check out our how-to page. It's full of great resources from our podcast to our video to our most frequently asked questions. And also check out our Try It Before You Buy It light where you can actually go now and get one of our premium quality up lights and a King Innovation Insta-Light, which is basically a battery pack now that allows you to go and run those lights and test them out on your pop property. Try it for 14 days. If you don't love it, send it back to us and we'll give you a full refund. And if not, you keep the light at a discounted rate and go and buy what you need for your project. So thanks again for watching. Please be sure to leave us a comment. We love your feedback. Have a great day.